Hey everybody and welcome to Sword of Fargol. According to some people, Sword of Fargol is the first roguelike. According to others, Rogue is the first roguelike. According to yet others, Beneath Apple Manor is the first roguelike. So here is the case with Fargol. Which by the way, we are playing on Vice, a six, C64 emulator. So I'm probably not going to give you links to that one, but if you find a ROM for this game, go get yourself Vice, put the ROM in there. Probably ready to go. It takes a little bit of tweaking with the joystick settings. Regardless, let's talk about Sword of Fargo here. Sword of Fargo was released in 82, two years after Rogue. However, it is directly based on a game which had a limited release in 79 by the name of Gamma Quest. So, it is possible, possible, mind you, that... Sword of Fargol was in development before Rogue, and there's a slim chance it was in development before Beneath Apple Manor, which was released in 78. I'm going to go ahead and give you the same argument I gave you when we recorded the Beneath Apple Manor video. It is true these games may have come out before Rogue, or at least been in development before Rogue. Conceptually, yes, they are the first roguelikes. But as far as lineage goes, all the roguelikes we know and love today they may have some inspiration from these games, but they are directly based on Rogue, and there's no evidence that Rogue was based on these games. In fact, it looks like they kind of developed in a vacuum, which used to happen a lot. Remember, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have cell phones, communication wasn't quite as easy as it is today. So it seems like in this vacuum, these three separate games sprung up around the same time, three different people had the same ideas, and they developed in isolation. And then Rogue is the one that continued on and had offspring which has led to Adam and Tales of Magial, etc. Regardless, it doesn't matter. We're going to play some Sword of Fargo and I would encourage you guys to leave your thoughts on this debate in the comments. Which is the first roguelike? Rogue? Uh, Sword of Fargo or Beneath Apple Manor? Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to play Sword of Fargo. Still waiting. Oh, there we go. So we have one teleport and one healing potion, which is something we have to keep track of. A chooses a healing potion, I cast an invisibility spell, T casts teleport spell, S casts a shield spell, L casts a light spell, O turns off a light spell, and drift is the fire button on the joystick. So here we go in the randomly generated maze, clearing squares, looking for loot, and monsters to kill. There's a temple somewhere around here. At the temple we sacrifice gold to gain experience. And also while we're on the temple we can't be attacked and our hit points slowly regen. So that's cool. Move around with the joystick, or in the case of this emulator, with the arrow keys. Oh, we're dead already. And we automatically took our healing potion. I am running away from him. So yes, it will automatically use your healing potion when necessary. The game lags a little bit whenever an enemy moves. I think that's true for the original, and it's not just my emulator. Yeah, Those olden days. What is that? Is that the temple? That's the stairs going down. We don't want to use those. Uh, that leads back up to the gargoyle. Let's not use the stairs quite yet. So the goal is to get the Sword of Fargoal, which is a random number of levels down in a maze. You pick the Sword of Fargoal up, and then you have 30 minutes to get it to the surface. That's the deal. And apparently there are bugs which can prevent you from winning the game, and that's really annoying, but it's an older game, so... They did not have the same... Oh, gray squares can either be a trap or treasure. In this case, it was a regeneration spell. Cool. But they didn't have the same budget and time and human resources allocated for quality assurance back then as they do now. So, it's forgivable. I understand the game is originally developed by one guy. He made just a little 
personal game, showed it to a publisher. We were being attacked by a rogue who just stole our gold. Can we kill him? You have slain a rogue. We got our money back. Cool. Uh, showed it to developer. He was using the name um, Gamma Quest 2 for the game. I guess it was based on another game he'd written for himself called Gamma Quest 1. And the developer's like, well, that's a really cool game, but Gamma Quest, uh, yeah, we, we can do better than that. So they renamed it Sword of Fargo. And that was actually a name is based on another name he proposed, which I can't remember off the top of my head. It's some foreign word for prison. But in any case, a little bit of history. It's all irrelevant. You can find it all in the Wikipedia. I'm just going to say that. That's where I found it. I read the Wikipedia article and I found an original copy of the manual because with a lot of these older games, if you don't have a manual, you're SOL because there's no in-game help. There's no way to know what the key bindings are. What is that again? Hidden treasure. Gold is too heavy. Oh yes, yeah, so we have to find a magic sack to carry more gold. Or we need to find the temple to sack it. With our luck. Oh, there's the temple. Sacrifice gold. Cool. Let's go get more. Down. Down, I say. Hidden treasure. Let's sacrifice more and regenerate hit points. Sacrifice gold. Cool. Let's regen. I don't think enemies can attack us while we're on the temple either. Yeah, he's running away. So let's chase him down and kill him. Slain an ogre. We're going to go back and regenerate hit points. Temple. I think eights are max hit points. Yes, probably. Let's continue on. I know we don't want to mess with that gargoyle. He's way too tough. I've actually never owned a C64. I own a lot of interesting old computers. Um, SR Partner, uh, TI-99, actually I own a couple of them. Um, what else is it I own? Oh, I can't remember the name of it. I own a very interesting little portable computer um, that I can't remember the name of now, but I own quite a few nice little computers. Do not own a Commodore 64, oddly. You'd think I would, but I do not. Actually, unfortunately, I had some, a lot of old MS-DOS computers that I just recently got rid of because I needed room, and I had an entire closet just filled with old computers. So, sad day, but they had to go. Let's heal and sacrifice some gold. Then we're going to go back and kill the Dwarvish Guard. Actually, there's a room we haven't explored. Let's check that out, too. Level raised to two. Cool. Now we might be able to kill the gargoyle. No, it wasn't a room after all. Temple. Where are our max hit points now? Ooh. Is it still going? Yeah, it's still going. 16, wow. 17. How high will it go? 18. 19. 20? 21 is still going. How many hit points can we regenerate? I believe we were capped at 8 just a little bit ago. Twenty-five. Uh, it would seem we are capped at 25. Cool. Let's kill this dwarf. Shriek, chop, shriek. You've slain Dwarven Guard. Okay, cool. Let's see if we can kill these gargoyles. A gargoyle. Growl. Claw. 
You've slain Gargoyle. Cool. Let's go kill this guy. Ugh. Claw. Ugh. Claw. You've slain Gargoyle. Apparently, if you move onto their space first, it gives you an advantage in combat, but if they move into your space first, you suffer a disadvantage. Or so says the manual. So that there could be a trap, or it could be hidden loot. What? What just happened? It said we lost our map. Oh, it's the same level, I guess, but... We just don't know our way around now. So we took a lot of damage. I think it may have moved some things around. I'm not sure. The temple should still be up here, hopefully. There it is. Sacrifice our gold, and we'll wait to heal. Maybe it blew up part of the map. This is pretty cool, but I'm thinking that I like uh, Beneath Ample Manor a little better. Like this, so far, I couldn't see myself doing a full playthrough on it. Uh, I mean, if it was the only game I owned, yeah, I'd be playing it every night. But, if I was going to do a Let's Play of an older game, I think I'd be more inclined to do a Let's Play of Beneath Ample Manor. It was more interesting to me than this. But, I've only scratched surface. This may get better as time goes on. Just seems a little slow. So let's kill this gargoyle. Oh, it's not gargoyle, it's an elven ranger. Clang, ouch, slash, clang, shriek. Oh gosh, he's tough. Running away. Well, let's heal again. Trying to think, what was my first computer game that I got really into? Probably the original IBM or Mega Man for the IBM, uh, which I believe was different from the NES version. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was. Got really into that. Also played the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which had some RPG elements to it, which was really cool. Uh, it was really hard, though, really, really hard. And I was just a little kid. So, Mega Man was more accessible to me, plus my father also played it, so he would play it and I'd play it. And good, cool, bonding experience thing. I have actually never beaten the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I have beaten the original Mega Man. Which was pretty cool. Elven Ranger, thud, ouch, clink, shriek, sash, chop, clink, oh, that was close, but we killed him, let's heal, <coughs> and then go on down to the next level. Doing some good healing right now. Really good healing. Yep. Highly enjoyable. This right here, this is what kills the game for me. <laughs> this is what does it. I'm not sure that I could uh, could play hours of this. Nope. Concept's cool though. And it has that real time element to it. This is like a precursor to Diablo. It's like a real time roguelike. Or I guess some would say that's a rogue light. So there's a question. And again, leave your feedback in the comments. Maybe instead of this being a... Ooh, there's something for us to kill. 
Instead of this being a roguelike, maybe this is the first roguelite, which was developed before the first roguelike. And maybe then we could say that roguelites are based on roguelikes. Oh yeah. Sure, we can further confuse that by throwing in some time travel, a little bit of TARDIS. A little bit of Back to the Future. See, little do we know that Thomas Biscuit, after creating Ultimate Atom and getting filthy rich, he creates a time machine, travels back in time to the early 1980s, or excuse me, mid-1970s, and tells the creator of Sword of Fargle, whose name is, again, Jeff McCord, hey, so roguelikes are about to be a thing. You're not going to get a game to market quite quick enough, and even if you do, it's going to be overshadowed by this whole rogue game. No, what you need to do is come up with the first roguelite before the first roguelike even comes out. And that's how we got this game. This is actually inspired by Atomic Bis Thomas Biscuit from the future in the past. Because time travel, and I'm not saying it's aliens, but Thomas Biscuit might be an alien. Just throwing it out there. We have even more hit points to regen now. This is great. This does not lead to slow grinding gameplay at all. Is 31 our cap now? That seems kind of arbitrary, but okay. So we jump to 8 to 25 to 31? Sure. We'll go with that. There's something else for us to kill. Should we kill it? At some point, we really need to go down the stairs. Thud, clang, thud, slash, thud, slash, thud. Oh gosh, running away in terror. See, I also thought the um, Beneath Apple Manor was quite tactical with its use of magic and running, strangely. Um, like, am I going to bash? Am I going to kick? Am I going to cast a spell? Am I going to run? It was all very interesting. Um... And the spells were, again, very tactical. It wasn't just your usual fireball, ice bolt, acid spray, zip zap, pow. It was, am I going to try heal? Am I going to try teleport? What am I going to do? And then trying to set up the monsters where if you could run, you could kite them around and get back to the stairs and get a full heal. I actually really enjoyed Apple Manor. It was pretty cool. I think at some point we will be doing a full Let's Play of Apple Manor. We will not be doing a full Let's Play of... Uh, sort of horrible. Don't think it's going to happen. Cue the comments. You'll be like, oh, you have to do this or I will never watch your channel again. We will bury you. You will never be a real YouTuber unless you can beat Sword of Fargle. Uh, don't do that to me, guys. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Yep. Ugh, I had stuff to do today, and I batch recorded a whole bunch of Adam. Like, a whole bunch of Adam. Yup. So we're going to have Adam videos for a while. You know why I did that? Because we went a month without Adam videos, and it was horrible. And I recognized the need for Adam videos, so I batch recorded Adam videos, so we will have Adam videos for quite some time. And that way I do not have to debate, should I just stop working so I can record more item videos this week? Are we going to die? I think we may die. We are, we are so dead. We are, we, are, we are dying. Oh. Oh no. Oh. And I tried to run and my joystick wasn't responding. And I'm not sure if that was the emulator sucking or if that was the game. I, I really am not sure, but we died. We died hard. And I had spells like I've cast if I'd known the keyboard wasn't going to respond. Or the joystick, I should say. The emulated joystick, which is my keyboard. Should we go again? Yeah, sure. Yeah! Thor to Fargo by Jeff McCord. Heck yeah. Presented by Epics. Good game for its day. Has not survive the test of time. Unlike Beneath Apple Manor, which I actually think is still really cool, and I'm probably going to play more of. Are you guys picking that up? Have I said that before? 
that I might be playing some more beneath Apple Manor. Yeah, it, it might be happening. Got to start uh, or got to finish up this whole series I'm doing with the classic roguelikes, where I'm going to show all of them. Like we're going to do Hack and Ang Bad and all of them, all. Of them. That's that's what we're doing right now. Right now. So we started with Rogue and we went back in time, like the future Thomas Biska, who will be go back in time to inspire this game. Um. Yeah, so we started with Rogue, went back in time, sort of Fargo, beneath Apple Manor. Next, we're going to probably do Hack or Angbad or one of those. And then things I want to do right now, and I don't know in what order, more Atom, obviously. Really want to do some more BBS games at some point. Um, I want to... I've had it requested that I do a longer series on the original Rogue, so we will probably be doing that. I want to do a longer series on Doom RL, because I really like Doom RL, and I've kind of gotten back into the groove with it. Almost beat it the other day, matter of fact. Would have been my first Doom RL win. Uh, and then I probably want to do some Apple Manor. Then, um, oh, Dungeon of the Endless. I actually really enjoy Dungeon of the Endless. Got quite good at it, haven't played it in a while though, so I'll uh, pick it back up. I want to practice though, before I make a video, because I don't want to make a fool of myself on cam. I used to be pretty good at Dungeon of the Endless. Never meet, beat it on hard mode, so maybe I wasn't that good, but I was able to do a solo Golgi run on normal, so that was cool. Like, I killed all my characters at the first floor, and then just played the rest of the game as Golgi, and won. It was pretty epic. It was on a dare, a friend of mine who is a total, total Golgi hater, told me that I could not beat the game with just Golgi, and I proved him wrong. I proved him very wrong. I'm looking at you, Ben. If you're in the audience right now, I'm looking at you. Own up to it. I proved you so wrong. But apparently, I just hid gold. That's cool. Gotta make sure his enemies can't find it. Where is the temple? Gotta find the temple. More gold. Hiding the gold. Can't let the enemies get my gold. Gotta find the temple somewhere. Why does the gold look like little fireballs? Are fireballs made out of gold? Is that due to a rift in the space time continuum from where Thomas Biscuit in the year 3000 stole the TARDIS and uh, traveled back in time to inspire Sword of Fargo? Quite possibly. Yes, yes, hidden treasure. Gold is too heavy, I'm aware. This has a strange Pac-Man feel to it. Complete with clunky controls. Like, I'm sorry, the original Pac-Man is not that enjoyable. Controls are way too clunky. Could just be the cabinets are all ancient. And, you know, have a few years of sediment built up inside of the uh, joystick. Oh, that's a Dwarven Guard. I'm gonna die. No, I'm gonna run. Oh, I'm back to 9 health. Actually, yes, I can't fight him. Let's do it. I actually have the original strategy guide made for Pac-Man. As far as I know, it is the first video game strategy guide ever written. Cool little collector's item. Cool little collector's item. Yes, I know, gold is too heavy. It's because we don't know where the freaking temple is. Thank you. We are aware. Yes, it's stairs. I need a temple. Oh, ceiling trap. Healing potion taken. We're not dead. Oh, that's something that could kill us. Yes, please run. Please run. Temple. There we go. <coughs> Let's go kill this guy. A weak ogre. Shred. You have slain a weak ogre. Excellent. Temple. I gotta go get my gold. A Dwarven Guard. Thud. Shop. Ouch. Ooh, he's actually kicking our butt. Back to the temple. Back to the temple. With haste.
Our health is up. Let's kill this guy. My goal for this run is to go down the stairs. It'll be impressive. Heal. Sacrifice gold. Eleven. 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 I guess we have eleven hit points. Cool. Oh, now we're raised level two. Go back. <laughs> Get some more hit points. My audio channels look so strange right now. The uh, voice audio is trying to cap out. And then, yeah, I don't know. Because when I play back, I play it back. My voice is not that loud, but then on the recording mixer, it shows it as being really loud, and I don't know what's going on with that. I think it's trying. I think it's picking up a lot of background noise, and then it's filtering that out, and it's making me quieter. Theoretically, I don't really know how this stuff works. I am not a master OBS recorder. Let's kill this guy. And ogre. You've slain the ogre. What was that? Healing potion. Cool. Are we done? Have we cleared a level? Are we gonna go down some stairs? That'd be pretty epic. Vice seems to have some weird issues with joystick emulation. Like I could swear I have it set up right now where I have to hold down the control key. Do you, oh no, that's right, turn that off. Yeah, so when I use this default joystick emulation, did you hold down the control key while using the arrows to emulate the joystick? For whatever reason, it wouldn't work. And then I just told it to just take keyboard input and use that for direction, and that worked for some reason. I don't know. It's my first time messing around with Vice. I'll admit it. If I need to play a C64 game, I usually look for online emulation on some player like archive.org or something similar. I think years and years ago I had a C64 emulator up and running, but that's a long time ago. Uh, there's another video, and I can't remember what channel it is, on YouTube of someone playing this game. I just briefly watched it, and those two guys are hilarious. So if you watch this, uh, just do a search for Let's Play Sword of Fargo. Find them. They are hilarious. They will crack you up. They have a long argument about how to use healing potions. That's how you know you found the right video. Is 23 my max hit points? Nope. We're still going. Okay, I think we're at max. Let's kill this guy. Hey, Gargoyle. Growl. You've slain a gargoyle. Let's heal. And then let's go down some stairs. How do I how do I use stairs? Anybody? Stairs going down. Oh, I figured it out. Experience points 351. Experience level 2. Maximum hits 25. Battle skill 39. Dungeon level 2. Monster slain 6. Wait. So much waiting. It's like a PS1 game. Oh my gosh. We have one teleport and one healing potion. Q. Please wait. Again. <coughs> Thank you. 
Your quest continues. Cool. More gold. As a weak gargoyle, we should be able to kill it. Gnarl, you have slain a weak gargoyle. Raise level three. Cool. Goal points. There's some stairs. There's a web based C64 emulator. It doesn't work super well from what I saw, but it exists. I wonder if that's open source. You vanquish your wear bear. Be interesting to take a look at how they do it. I've actually been messing around lately with taking uh, DOS applications, converting them to JavaScript, and then wrapping them in Electron. Um, which for me, me just makes it really easy for me to port them to. I need to run for my life right now. Oh, he attacked me. I'm dead. Oh, you're vanquished. Healing potion. He ran away. Cool. Um. So, I mean, I work with the JavaScript, I work with PHP, right? Those are my deals. Things like Electron and Cordova. I I to just throw those out there. I've been had some serious recognition on my work with Cordova. Ooh, just teleport square. Uh, so, it's the easiest thing for me to work with. Uh, I've had some courses in Java. Like, theoretically, I should be able to work with Java. I can if I need to do something in Cordova that requires Java. Same as C sharp, right? But um, just not my bag. So what I do then is I can take these older DOS applications, convert them to JavaScript, and just put them in an Electron wrapper and use JavaScript to tweak the display and the controls. And I can port them to mobile. I can port them to desktop or whatever. Theoretically, I've only done it with one game now. But uh, you know. Yeah, it's a overly complicated way to do something that, for me, is easier to do than using some sort of rational approach. It, it's my typical MO. Why follow a rational approach when you can do something convoluted? If it's not convoluted, it's just not for me. Let's be straight. Explosion. Okay, I successfully hit the joystick button in time to avoid the explosion. Cool. Hey, monk. Shriek, clink. Oh gosh, he's tough. Run away. Run away. Attacked by a weak ogre. You've vanquished a weak ogre. Can we run from the monk? You're attacked by the monk. You vanquished a monk. We're raised level four. Oh my gosh, running for freaking lives right now. Oh, there are monsters moving around the darkness. Temple. One video I really want to do that I've never gotten a chance to do is I want to do a video that explains why I select the games that I select for the channel. There is some rhyme or reason to it. Probably as convoluted and nonsensical as my choice to take old DOS games written in C and convert them to JavaScript and then wrap those in native containers, but there is, there is some logic that makes sense to me and Cthulhu involved. And so I do want to do a video on that. And what I was hoping to do on that is uh, actually do a voiceover with a um, JavaScript application, of course, written by someone else that can scroll ASCII art in the background of a website. And I'm going to set that up in full screen mode and scroll this ASCII art where it actually looks like it's being typed on the screen or sent via terminal to the screen. And while that's going on, I'm going to do a voiceover that explains why pick these videos. Oh, I've been planning to do that though for over a year. Still hasn't happened, so maybe someday. Maybe tonight, I mean, apparently I'm just gonna 
spend my entire day, entire night, entire life sitting here recording videos. That way we're not going weeks without videos on the channel, which is more important in my life, definitely. Because of time travel and Dr. Biscuit. Yep. Oh, we're still gaining hit points. We may be at a while. I should go get a coffee. Yep, I will drive 20 minutes to the nearest town to get a coffee, drive 20 minutes back, and we'll still be getting hit points. You guys can sit here and talk with my cat. That'll be cool. 37's our maximum. Okay. I don't know why that enemy's just chilling down there, but he is. I do like how they have this kind of combination turn-based real-time, where if you wait too long, the enemies move on their own. But if you're not waiting around, then it's turn-based. It's interesting. It's a combination of real-time and turn-based aspects to the game. Growl. Growl. The sound effects are pretty cool for the time. I actually like them. Digging it. You should take the sound effects from this game and move them to Apple Manor. Explosion. Boom. Pit, you fell, and I did not hit the key in time. Oh, crap. See, so, yeah, there's a... I think they call it a drift key. Which I think is bound to the mouse... Or the joystick button. And if you hit it on certain traps, it lets you avoid the trap. You've slain a troll. Cool. Hobgoblin. You've slain a hobgoblin. Cool. I'll also say that just Apple Manor in this game, they have a different feel than Rogue and the subsequent Rogue likes. But that goes back to the big question of what is a Rogue like? What is a Rogue light? Where does one genre end and the other one start? And all oh, that's complicated and a great way to get some dislikes on YouTube, so I'm not going to touch it with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> If you guys want to argue about it, feel free to comment. Just hit the like button. That's that's my requirement, okay? If you're going to argue about roguelike versus rogue versus not related at all, you have to hit the like button before making your comment. There you go. And that's a joke, because if it wasn't a joke, YouTube would probably punish me in some way. Whatever. Regenning hit points. Oh yeah. It's like midnight and I have some fantasy that I'm going to go out even though it's snowing and work in my garage on my car. I was supposed to do that hours ago, but psh, who's counting? We have slain the werebear. That's cool. Let's heal. This also kind of reminds me of the original Gauntlet in some ways, but I did not like the original Gauntlet. As a matter of fact, I didn't like any of the Gauntlets. They just did not suit me. I had a friend, though, who was all about that Gauntlet life. Put a lot of quarters into the arcade machines. <coughs> it was that and... What was it? Marvel vs. Capcom? Was that the one he played? One of the fighters. One Street Fighter wasn't Mortal Kombat. He never got into Mortal Kombat. Played a little bit of Street Fighter, not much. Played the heck out of Tekken. Did not like Tekken either. This was not my game. Did play me some Mortal Kombat, though. Not as much the first one, but the second one and third one were really good. Experience points. 1,459, experience level 4, maximum hits 37, battle skill 84, dungeon level 3, monster slaying 16, wait.
We have no healing potions. We do have a teleport, though. That's cool. So you see, I guess on the Commodore you played this with both a keyboard and a joystick. So you controlled your character with a joystick, and then you cast spells with a keyboard. Your quest continues. Here we go. Got that gold. That good, good. That dosh. I do play a lot of Killing 4 1 because I know I have people from college, from back when I was in college, who still play Killing 4 1. They play that and. Um, oh, what's the name of it? Path of Exile. And so we play those together. Occasionally a little bit of true area. We used to play a lot of true area, but kind of got burned out on it. Ooh, that was an explosion. Bad plan. And yes, I know, I left a gray tile up there. I'm aware I did that on purpose because I didn't want an explosion before I found the temple. And then I did that. Because I make good decisions. Can't carry more gold. Burying gold. Cool. Run, dude. Run, little dude. Run. Run away. There we go. It's like the controls stop working for a second every time the enemies move. It's an issue. I wonder if that's just the emulator running slow or if that's how the game was originally. My guess is that's how the game was originally. I think this emulator is pretty spot on as far as performance goes. Yes, I know. Hidden treasure. Gold's too heavy. Okay, I can move in diagonal. It's good enough. No, oh, running away. I'm running away. Trying to find a temple. Once we find the temple, we can make excursions. Skirmish excursions. Skirmish these guys to death, that's what we're gonna do. So, like, am I gonna move? There we go. Run, run. Nope, we're fighting. We vanquished a weak river. Cool. Run, run, run. Want to find that temple before we get into any heavy combat? Stairs going up. Can we actually go back up the floor? I guess that's something we can figure out. Stairs going down. This is where everyone in the audience is shouting, Hey, dummy, you know you went up on the last floor and stood down. No, I didn't realize that. I don't think I did. Probably didn't. Might have. We're just going to go with no. Hiding the gold. So... Ooh, an old Atari game I really liked was Adventure, and I do not mean the text-based Adventure, I mean the Atari action game called Adventure, where you dodge dragons and found keys and unlocked doors and got a chalice that you then had to get back to the exit in order to win points. It was quite fun. It's a little bit like this, but a little more Pac-Man mixed in, a little more real-time. Those dragons were sneaky, though. And that freaking Batman. Ugh. Not the Batman, but Bat, comma, man, exclamation mark. Are we fully healed? We are not fully healed. We need to get fully healed. His enemies are all kind of bunched together. I'm not sure if that's an issue. Might be. Might kill us. Don't know. We should probably grab gold before fighting him. <coughs> well, we're still regenerating, I think. Are we? Are we done? Cool. We're done. Oh, we're level 5 now. Apparently, you have to step off of the temple to level up, and then you have to step back on to get more hit points. Yay. 
Please wait. My cat's just kind of staring in a chair right now. Looks half asleep. I'm not quite sure what he's doing, but he seems to be doing it. Are we done regening hit points? I'm not even paying attention anymore. I'm paying attention to my cat, which is usually what I'm doing with my life. Cats are important. I have three of them. They are my babies. Hidden treasure. What was that? Teleportation spell. Cool. Now we have two teleportation spells. Hidden treasure. Gold too heavy. Okay. Let's go back. To the temple. See, I'm wondering if this game was originally called, what was it, Gamma Quest, wasn't there an old tabletop game called Gamma World? Was it based on that? Because that was like sci-fi. That was that kind of old niche sci-fi genre where there were a bunch of B-movies made. It was like Mad Max, but with mutations. All very dark. Are we max hit points? Are we? Are we at max hit points? Yes. I always wanted to play Gamma World, but yeah. it's one of the troubles, so. I used to play a lot of indie tabletop RPGs. I'm not a big D&D fan, but I like indie games, and I occasionally play others like uh, Vampires Masquerade, um, Big Eyes, Small Mouth, which not huge, but you know people played it. But oh my gosh, why is my phone ringing at this hour? No, absolutely not. games like that and I used to have people where I was that would play them with me and since then I've just never found a group that's interested in that. All I want to play is freaking Dungeons and Dragons which I do not do Dungeons and Dragons at this point in my life. I don't know. I might, I might do a Ravenloft campaign if given the option. But that's about it. So, it'd be cool to get some people to play those kind of games with. Um, I do have a group that I was playing the Aiden Light RPG with, which was super cool. But, scheduling. The death of every gaming group, right? It's not the enemies that kill you, it's the scheduling. See how that happened. And then there's a gaming store nearby that may have people interested in playing smaller games, but I don't know yet. I haven't checked it out. Yeah, previously the closest gaming store was about an hour away. Now I have one twenty minutes from my house, so that's real cool. Thump, you vanquished the weak gargoyle. Cool. More money. Oh, I need to go activate that trap slash hidden treasure, whatever it is. We'll find out. And I think this will be our last floor. And I actually want to see if we can go up the stairs. Oh, we troll. Yeah, we killed him. I figured. And a swordsman. Ouch. Shriek. He was slaying him. Cool. I just want to see if we can go up the stairs. We have a magic sack now. Let's take that to a temple real quick. Yay! Hit point regeneration. Oh, watched a really good uh, roll for it, which is a, uh, what do they call it, a Twitch show where they play tabletop games. They were playing, um, well, I don't want to ruin it for you. It started out as 
World of Darkness Mortals, but there may have been a little more to it. It was really good. I recommend you check it out. It was called Just Around the Corner, so just do a search for a roll for it, Just Around the Corner, and it'll be worth your time. Oh, this person is strong. I am running. Oh, apparently I'm not running. Am I going to die? Teleport. You were vanquished by a monk. You died. I died and teleported. Okay. Well, there we go. That's sort of Fargo. It's kind of fun, uh, but it's very dated. Interesting concept. It would probably make for a good mobile game these days if it was faster paced. Uh, my money, though, is with Beneath Apple Manor. It's, it's kind of kicking. I'm digging it. No. So there you have it. I will catch y'all later.